Today, welcome everyone, firstly. Um, today I'm joined by Robin Redlake, the local lad, um, who's uh, just failed miserably at a first take of questions, so we're going to go for it again. Um, hey mate, how are you? You know what questions are. Hi, Rod. How are you? How's your lockdown been? Um, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Um, I get it right this time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been pretty chilled. Um, just trying to keep my head down, do my work. Um, trying to stay motivated, you know. They say, do you work? What work have you been doing? Well, <laughs> probably a bit different to your work. Um, just sort of grafting it in the gym, really, trying to skip it. Um, you know, it's, it's been an odd one for everyone, obviously. Um, just trying to stay motivated, I think, is the main thing. So you, um, say, you say stay motivated. What, what's the, um, how are you getting on with that? Because it's obviously a tough scenario. You, you basically you don't know when you're starting. You don't know how it's yeah, so. What, what, obviously, the, um, process? yeah, the season obviously started and um, finished on an odd one. And um, even the club, you know, as a player, you get a lot of your um, info um, off the club and, you know, you know when to train, how to train uh, for your SC and whatnot. And obviously that's all thrown up in the air, sort of Greg, RSC, you know, himself. You know, it's hard for him to even know where to start when we don't even know when we're going to be training. So, um, yeah, it's the um it's all put on sort of ourselves as athletes to sort of uh push ourselves and yeah just keep going you might be an athlete you're certainly an athlete obviously you're uh you're not a shy you're a bit of a gym bunny these days because i remember way back when i played with you when you were going up through red roof and you just cracked into the first team and honestly here we go you must have weighed about stick. 10 kgs mate so what, what's happened in the last six or Come seven years way. yeah so obviously we played together at red roof yeah I, Looking back at pictures recently, I, it's hard to believe sort of how much weight I have put on. Um, how old I am, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> We're all getting old, eh? Um, oh, I take credit for being a kind of a, a mentor and a muse. That yeah, kind of take, you take me under your wing. Today. That's <laughs> it. Um, I don't know, back then, obviously playing for Red Roof, it was just for fun and, you know, never really had the mentality of being a professional. And a part of playing was just the fun side of it. Um, and it got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm going to push on here and probably sort my diet out, which is is the main thing. And then obviously just get in the gym a bit and start shifting some tin, put on some weight. <laughs> so how how was it for you? Obviously, you're a local lad then. What, what you know? Where did you grow up? What, what, how when did you start playing rugby? And how was it yeah. for you as a kid in uh, Cornwall? So obviously, Red Roof lads. Uh, played all my rugby at Red Roof. I started at the age of 10. Um, played all the way through till I was probably 19, did um, all the age groups, did Colts. Um, took a year out from rugby, actually, and then uh, went to uni for a year in Plymouth. Uh, that didn't work out for me, so I came back and I was like, oh, I'm going to start picking up again. Um, turned out to Red Roof pre-season for the first team and started playing for Red Roof again and played the season there. So yeah, Red Roof through and through from, from the start. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good because obviously, with how rugby is these days, you do get a lot of people going from you know club to club. But it's nice and again refreshing to see that people go up from a club and you know start at the bottom and then they work their way up to the first team. Obviously, no one, no offense to Red Roof, they're a fantastic team. But the level you're playing at now, you've almost surpassed. Yeah. Um, gone, so. I would credit that to Red Roof, you know, I, you get a lot, a lot of boys move around nowadays, but for me, back in the day, it was purely just for fun, and I would say that's probably the reason I am where I am now, you know, still, I play for fun, I, I wouldn't be where I am, obviously, if I didn't enjoy it, so, you know. So you've got a, um, a county championship under the belt as well, haven't you? I've got two, actually. <laughs> oh, don't want to talk about it. Yeah, come on, come on, Rod. No, nah, yeah, no. Did three years actually, won one twice and then lost in my final year. I think I, I um, played 12 games and only lost one, so that was a good little run for Cornwall. Not bad, yeah. What, what did you, yeah. How did you feel like playing in front of a Cornish crowd? Because obviously, I was, I was uh, fortunate enough to have a couple of games of Cornwall, and there generally is it's a very unique feeling, yeah. So I'd, I'd always get asked this sort of by the, by the press after the games as a young lad, sort of nervous being to whoever it was at the time 
And um, I remember always saying, you know, the, the crowd is always that fast one player. You know, with Cornwall especially, they're always behind your back, you know, as that 16th player. And that's one thing I'd always say year after year after sort of winning at Twickenham. Twice, twice, <laughs> two, two and a half. <laughs> so, um, what? Just something I haven't really asked anyone this question. I, I was reading something in the paper today about uh, Leeds had a really renowned academy and they've disbanded their academy because of funding issues and stuff like that. And there's all uproar in Yorkshire about their pathway to greatness for their youngsters. You're a local guy, obviously. Um, what was your pathway, and what what do you think of the way that kids these days can promote themselves and get to professional? Because there's not a lot sure. down here unless you get dragged yeah, over so to kind of Devon way. Listening to obviously Will, he was speaking to you recently. And I think I followed the sort of same routes as him, really. Um, I wasn't really picked up at counties or I didn't go for an academy. I sort of played through Red Roof and I wasn't any good, really, growing, well, growing up until I probably hit 18, maybe, and then sort of doors opened a little bit. But yeah, um, like I said, it was always just the fun side of it. And that always motivated me to push myself on. It wasn't through like being pushed from academy or you know, any sort of team like that. It was just more my, my um, own motivation. Do you think there should be something in place in Cornwall to develop local talent, you know, that kind of age group level um, that stops them being kind of you know, driven out of the county because it really, if you want to play at any successful level uh, kind of schoolboy, it, it, yeah. it involves being involved with Exeter, doesn't it? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, especially, well, definitely even growing up myself, I think when I was in college, it was only just kicking off really with, um, we'll see Jack Noel and Callum Dickey a year above me and after that, everyone sort of, if, well, when you leave college, you sort of go to Exeter Academy um, and it has been that way, you'll see up, up till now, um, you have sort of Tro College, and unfortunately, they are linked with Exeter, so they'll always be pushing their players to move on to there afterwards, which is a shame. Um, it would be nice to see something locally, obviously, whether the Pirates can do it. It's, it's a huge undertaking to set that up, obviously. Um, yeah, it would be lovely to see, but you know, who knows? It, like I said, it is, it is a hard thing to set up. No, absolutely. We had um, we used to have this kind of academy program years, years and years ago, and it did produce some very good players. You got the likes of Sam Betty that was in it. He went on to yeah. play the, uh, you know, Worcester Premiership. Darren Daviduk, again, he went yeah. on to play um, Gloucester. So there is plenty of talent out there. And uh, you know, I'm not obviously a local Cornishman myself, not like yourselves, but I do think it's sometimes a shame when you see all this talent just being kind of. Excuse my words wisely, herded up by the yeah. all encompassing Exeter, which I bear in mind, I think it's a fantastic outfit. I think they've done incredibly well. Um, yeah. But I just think that we, Cornwall need to start taking some of their own players back and, and kind of keeping them in sure. within their kind uh, of yeah. area. At, at the same time, it is, is nice that um, sort of Exeter have got linked to Pirates and we obviously do get players back, if you will. <laughs> yeah, true. But, um, yeah, like you said, it, it would be nice to have something local, local and just keep... There's a lot of talent in Cornwall, you know. Well, take you, for example. Hit, well, you yeah, say, I, you like, say that you, you weren't particularly good to your 18, but I, I don't know yeah. how old you were when you were at Red Roof, mate, but you were a youngster yeah. when you started that first season. I think I was coach at the time. And you, you, were, you were a step above everyone else, mate. And I'm not just blowing smoke yeah. up you because I'm interviewing you. It was clear that you... Not that you hadn't had necessarily that kind of pathway of development where you get all these satellite yeah. sessions. It was it was off your own hard work, and there's a lot of people like that in Cornwall. Yeah, I was, I was a bit of a late bloomer, and I think the only reason I sort of progressed was playing through sort of Cornwall and the senior team. You know that that did open doors. Sort of at the time, Graham Dorr was obviously coaching, and I think if I hadn't played for Cornwall, I, you know. I don't, I don't know where I'd be now, you know, possibly having a full-time job and playing part-time rugby, you know, still for Red Roof, possibly. What do you think of them scrapping the county championship then? That obviously, I'm not a massive fan of that. I think it's a bit well, of a shame. Yeah, it is a shame, you know, mm -hmm. like, like you said, sort of, um, well, I've just said like, that was my way in and there'll be a lot of players, young players, that have to go down that route of, you know, showing themselves through sort of county rugby 
and then you know if you take that away then a lot of young players won't be able to progress so let's move on and start talking about the pirates a little bit because we've, we've yeah. not really touched on it yet and you're there wearing your nice little pirates vest with your arms out looking all sure enough so um <laughs> you've been at the pirates a while now haven't you how long have you been with them now uh, two, two three years yeah going on to my third year now so how so how's it uh, been what were your thoughts on the Pirates? Obviously, we've talked about Corn, we've talked about Red Roof and Fru, but what yeah. the Pirates and the boys and the culture and the squad and the coaches? Honestly, time is fly, like flown. It's going on three years now. I can't believe it. And it feels like yesterday, sort of, I was going down for my first training session, coming back from an injury, because obviously I came down on a, on, um, a knee injury. So I sort of I started the season for myself at the end of the season that I actually joined, sorry, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, sorry, Rod. That's all right. What have you got there? Cider? Patches or no? <laughs> yeah, a bit, bit of cider. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, honestly, it's been amazing. Um, being a Red Youth lad, you'll see Pirates has always been the premier, premier team in Cornwall for myself, at least for my age. And it was always a dream to sort of play with them. Um, obviously watched... Um, Pirates at Twickenham in that final. God knows how old I was. Um, Which final? Yeah. Uh, sorry? Which final was that? The EDF. Is that the one in Twickenham or the, the BNI in Camborne? Um, doesn't no, matter. I played in both. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. <laughs> <get that. laughs> nah, one at Twickenham. Yeah, so we'll see. Was... Sorry, go on. I don't know. You carry on. Sorry. Yeah, always a dream to play for them. And. Yeah, now I'm in the mix. It's you know, it just feels right. What um, what were your thoughts on last season? Obviously, it was um, you're predominantly a winger, uh, a fantastic winger at that, big strong ball carry, and the the try against Amtill yeah. particularly um, springs to mind, where you showed not just a, a, a relatively steppy step, but a massive fend and a bit of pace. But you've also yeah. had a, a couple of games of thirteen. So you know, what, what was your kind of breakdown season last year? Yeah, um, obviously disappointment at the end of the year. Um, you know, ask anyone, they'll be disappointed where it ended. We were going on a bit of a roll, obviously third, pushing on possibly second. And, you know, for that to just end was a bit of anticlimax. Um, on a whole, you know, obviously I'd only been there for two years at the time, but it was a step up for my first year. Um, having Chris step in was a big move for the club, I think. Obviously taking the pressure off Gav and um, Paves, you know, did wonders for the team. You know, you know, obviously they could just relax more on their coaching, and I think that helped us hugely. How did you find Chris? Because I always saw him as quite an inspirational fella, but you can never really quite put your finger on how he does it, but he does it. Because he's very yeah, much in the like, background, isn't he? So I'd always ask, sort of, you know, from friends and family, what what does Chris do? And it's it's hard one to explain. You know, he's he's there to improve the performance. And you try and put your finger on it and sort of explain what he's done, you know, but he's always in the background. He's pushing the coaches, which is the main thing. Um, and then sort of kick come game day, he'll have his say. And, you know, it's just the last few percent that are pushing the team on, I think. So what, what, was, your, what was your kind of favourite game last year that obviously you played in and, and why was that your favourite game? <laughs> oh, is this God. not one of the ones uh, that you had pre-planned an answer for? <laughs> No, <laughs> um, I would say probably Yorkshire, either playing thirteen or the other one playing wing. Um, I got a few tries, and it was it was just nice to no um, no disrespect to them playing a, a team um, that possibly weren't up to scratch. I think we could probably relax a bit. You know, every every week you'll you'll push mentally and physically to sort of perform and. Um, it was it was nice to sort of be able to relax and just do you. And I remember being able to score. I think it was two that game. So yeah, it was probably that one. Probably not a, a fan favourite, but yeah, I enjoyed it nonetheless. No, I enjoy, I enjoyed it. It's always good to see you know a team click. And you know when you play obviously like you say a team that's not quite up to the standard that they yeah. have in the past. It's still not. You've still got to do your thing. You've still got to do the jobs. It just it's just sometimes it's easier than to come together. And when you know, as a motivational thing, it's nice to see that when you do something in training and then you do it on the weekend, it, it works. But how did you um, how did you find 13 then? Because if you, no one's ever played wing in 13, they wouldn't have a clue how completely different <laughs> positions are. Especially in the yeah, so, 
Yeah, there's um, it's something I I played at Red Roof a little bit, you know, come the end of the season, and it's it is a position I I enjoy playing. I played it at Colts quite a bit growing up, and um, I don't know if Gav came up to me, I I went up to him, but um, sort of planted the seeds on wanting to play there the previous season to last. How did you plant the seed? What did you say? You know that 13, <laughs> he ain't much good, is he? <laughs> Probably had a few beers and got in Gav's ear or something. So. <laughs> yeah, he just said yes to get rid of you then. That's fair enough. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it came, I think it was the cup time, sort of mid-year, and he came up to his like, um, he said he'd give me the opportunity. So, you know, I had fun there. Um, it, it's obviously hugely different to wing you know, defensively and in attack. There's different strategies, isn't it? Did you, did you appreciate the, the wingers a lot more once you played 13? Because I said, I, again, I can only speak from my own experience, but I played a lot of time in the wing. And the moment yeah. I moved into 13, I had a much, much more of an appreciation for what the winger can do. So, you know, when you're standing on that kind of 13 channel at the end of the chain and you can't, you can see everyone inside of you. You yeah. can't see, or apart from a, a massive forty-yard void outside of you, and you don't know where that guy is. If they say nothing, you're basically just hung out to dry. Whereas hung if you've out, got yeah. the likes of yourself, uh, Moilo in particular, fantastic communicator, and it just gives you that confidence to stick to the kind of team patterns and do your thing. Yeah, I think I learned quite a bit from playing thirteen. You know, you week in, week out, you're playing wing, you're getting used to that, and sort of. Um, I don't know. You, oh, it's hard to explain. I guess so. You get used to that brand of rugby, just sort of finishing tries and chasing kicks and blah blah blah. And then you you go into thirteen and you're sort of opened up to a wider range of skills. And you have to bring in your passing and just scanning. And you know, I I think it did make me a better player. You know, after playing two games there. No, well, it. it... It shows. I think, and again, I only play. I only see the home games because I get a free ticket. Uh, yeah. Like, chatting <laughs> rubbish for eighty minutes. But um, no, I thought you both you played well when when you had that opportunity, and it is good to see that kind of depth, especially this year, because obviously the, the squad has thinned out a little bit, and we will sure. be relying on that kind of versatility of players um, such as yourself. So you know, fingers crossed, you get a couple more opportunities. They might have to get a bigger yeah. shirt though, because obviously you can have like. <laughs> A three-month pre-season where you're just going to be lifting weights. So. Yeah, no, um, yeah, no, it it wouldn't be an opportunity I would, I'd turn down again. You know, I, it is a position I've always enjoyed playing. So yeah, if, if it could, did come about, which I'm sure it will happen in the season, um, like you said, the, the team is possibly a bit less than last year, and with injuries, that will happen. So we'll see. So final question: What? What are you hoping for this year? What are you looking to get out of this year? Whether it be from a squad or a personal perspective, what are your aims? Yeah. And you must know this question was coming. It's coming at the end of yeah, the day you've done so far. So, <laughs> obviously, practice. So, and I, I was thinking, what are my personal goals? And it is a tricky one. I think it's with what's happened, it's um, it's hard to set a goal, you know? And that sounds dreadful, but it's, I think, um, you know, just trying to get back into the routine and being able to train and get up to fitness is, you know, one of the main goals at the minute. Um, and after that, you know, probably re reassess and then set some more goals. So, yeah, not, I don't actually have anything main at the minute. It's just getting back to fitness, getting back to the routine of playing rugby and um, getting ready to play pretty much, yeah. No, that, that, that makes sense. Again, it goes back to what we said. It's hard to to set goals and plans for when, yeah. but there's no end goal in sight so mate thank you very much for your time honestly it's been thank a pleasure you. Speaking to you and it, it's always nice to speak to someone that kind of I managed to actually have a run out with tailing off into <laughs> my career and it's, it's especially gratifying when you see the player you've become as well and not yeah. just become but obviously the potential that you've still got to come as well so I'm genuinely really thank looking you. forward to seeing you play this year mate and um, enjoy well. the rest of lockdown and get back in that gym and Oh, keep pushing. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I'll right catch on. you later, all right? Take care. Yeah, cheers. Bye. Cheers, mate.